What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Cocktails in the War Room. I'm Mistress Carrie, and every night at 8.30, we uh, gather together in the war room at my house to go over the day, to kind of figure out what's going on with everybody, to stay connected. Uh, we're all social distancing and trying to um, stay in our houses and stay away from everybody and try not to um, get sick. And so um, I can't believe it's it's been weeks. We started this, I think, on March 16th, getting together every night at 8.30 um, on Facebook Live just to kind of hang out and kind of go over the headlines of the day and see how everybody's doing and um, to have a cocktail. Hmm. Oh, I just dripped some of Fernandez's new batch of sand sangria all over my pants and it's Friday so there you go how are you guys doing today how are you holding up ah Johnny Hollywood what's going on tons of people checking in what's up Scruffy what's up Bonnie Ange hey Wendy um Jay says they closed Colorado schools for the rest of the year and now I have to online teach for seven weeks oh Hey, Quinny. Um, so it's Friday night. I hope you guys got a cocktail. Um, I have a cocktail because my good friend Fernandez made a new batch of his sangria and left it on my doorstep today. It is a good day. Mm. Tom Miller says he's got a highball going. Nicely done, Tom. What's up, Sammy? Um, at least weed is legal in, on social. Remember our report. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had a little lipstick on my teeth. Um, so there's a lot to go over today as there is every day. Um, I keep this binder kind of next to the TV and when I'm either watching television or I'm um, spending, yesterday I was on my phone for 10 hours, I am embarrassed to say. The amount of screen time that I am racking up on my phone is insane. But I keep the book with me so that when I see things that I wanna write down and talk to you guys about at night, I start like a page every day of things I wanna talk about. Then I realized, that this book of like all of my notes and what I would have called show prep when I was on the air um, is turning into like a pseudo diary of my self-isolation in my house. And I don't know, maybe I'll put it in a time capsule somewhere where this is like all the headlines, all the things we talked about, I have kind of scrawled and written in a, boat, uh, in a book. I also realized how terrible I am at spelling. Absolutely awful. Uh, Mark Bishop said, I got a Corona and a Lime here. Well, you better um, ration those Coronas because one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is that Mexico has shut down brewing Corona beer because they do not deem it essential. So not only is there going to be a condom shortage that we talked about the other day. What's up, Mickey? Uh, but there is also going to be a Corona beer shortage because they are not brewing it in Mexico anymore. Chris, is that cup from New Orleans? No, actually, believe it or not, I have only driven through Louisiana and I have never been to New Orleans. And I regretted not going before Katrina and it is on my bucket list. And I had thought about, um, since I was laid off, maybe going down to Mardi Gras this year. And obviously that didn't happen. And now I'm stuck in the house. So maybe next year. But no, the, unfortunately, the cup is not from New Orleans because um, somebody just gave it to me because I like skulls. Um, somebody just said, Sean said, I found hand sanitizer. Sean, congratulations. Hey, Jen. My college roommate, who could probably tell all kinds of stories about me being a young, drunk idiot in college, just signed on and she's watching as well. Um, so yeah, Corona beer is no longer being brewed in Mexico because they do not deem it essential. I find it ironic that we deem it essential to buy it and consume it here, at least in Massachusetts. 
And not just because the packies are open, because Governor Baker today signed a bill allowing restaurants to deliver beer and wine with your delivery orders, and you can also pick it up as part of your takeout order. So more booze for everyone. Cheers to that. Mm. There you go. Um... So let's see. I can hear Wednesday. Yeah, she's in the other room. She's very sleepy today. It's been rainy and cold, and she just kind of wanted to be snuggly and not really do much today. So um, I saw this really cool. What, what, el what else is really cool about my little notebook is that all of my friends and family know I'm keeping this notebook to figure out what I'm going to talk to you about every night. So now they're sending me links, and they're like, hey, did you see this? Hey, did you see this? So there is an Instagram page called Pasta with Grandma. Have you seen this thing? It's part of a website called nonalive.com, N-O-N-N-A live.com. And they actually have people's real grandmas giving cooking classes online. And I thought, you know what? We should all be trying in some way, shape, or form to better ourselves while we're stuck in our houses. So trying to learn a language, an instrument, to learn how to cook, like we should be trying to do something constructive. And I thought it would be really cool if you were looking to like, I don't know, learn how to make pasta or the best tomato sauce or whatever, um, pasta with grandma on Instagram or Nona Live, N-O-N-N-A, -N -N or Nana Live, I guess, depending on how you pronounce it, dot com. I don't know if they charge a fee, like a membership, or I'm not really sure how it works, but I just thought it was really cool that if you were going to be stuck in the house, you could learn how to cook from someone's Nona. Um, and it's probably the best stuff ever. Um, sad news in the music world, Bill Withers passed away. He was um, 81 years old. You know his music. Lean on me, Ain't No Sunshine. The guy's voice was... Um, just amazing and um, he passed away at the age of 81 uh, not corona related from uh, what I read however um, the patriarch of the um, Marcellus family um, Winton Marcellus their father Ellis Marcellus I believe his name was um, the jazz legend he passed away from complications of the coronavirus um, and the tributes um, online for him have been amazing so we've lost some pretty influential musicians um, over the last week or so um, James Taylor who we had talked about previously because he donated a bunch of money to help get um, supplies for uh, hospitals in Boston he has had to postpone his Fenway show so obviously the cancellations um, and the tour postponements and concert postponements in the city are uh, just continuing we we heard the other day obviously the Boston calling which was arguably one of the biggest shows of the year with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, the Foo Fighters, and Rage Against the Machine got canceled. Uh, a lot of the other shows are getting postponed, including James Taylor. Um, did you see that the N95 masks that Robert Kraft flew from China on um, Aircraft One, um, they unloaded them, they landed at Logan yesterday, they unloaded them, and then they delivered 300,000 of them today in New York. I believe the Patriot Semi pulled up to the Javits Center today. And what I thought was really interesting was Governor Baker had his press conference today and he um, was talking about how choked up he got yesterday watching the Patriots plane land with all of those masks. And he told a story and I haven't been able to get the exact story in the articles that I've read, so maybe you guys can help me out with this. But Governor Baker talked about how the Commonwealth um, of Massachusetts ordered 3 million N95 masks from China and 3 million N95 masks that were due to come to Massachusetts were confiscated at the point at the port of New York. Does anybody know why? Why did our masks get confiscated? And then if they got confiscated and the Commonwealth bought them, did the Commonwealth get reimbursed for them? And where the fuck are the masks? Like, what's going on? There's 3 million N95 masks. Now, Governor Baker, I didn't see the whole press conference today, but he said they, he used the word confiscated at the point, at the port of New York. Um, so I didn't understand what was going on with that, but I thought that was really strange. And obviously, because 3 million of anything 
is not very inexpensive. Um, I was curious where the money came from and if it was our money that bought them, meaning our taxpayer money, um, were we reimbursed? I think it's kind of weird, kind of strange. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I am now at the point in Tiger King because you guys have forced me to uh, watch this crazy show. I'm at the point now where the weird guy comes and um, tries to partner up with Joe Exotic to fight Carol fucking Baskin. And can I just tell you, I still hate every single person on this show. After watching the scene in this latest episode where the tiger was giving birth and to show how quickly they took the cub and whatever, like, I seriously hate every single person on that show. And I am 100% convinced that no one should own a goddamn tiger. Period. Full stop. End of story. You don't need them. You're freaking weird. You're not a real doctor. You shouldn't be putting all these animals in cages and you sure as hell shouldn't be breeding them. You guys are all freaks. I'm still watching the show and I apologize. But I hate them all. It's awful. And nobody even knew who Carol Baskin was before. And now you can't say her name without saying Carol fucking Baskin. Don't you love how I still whisper the F word like I'm on the radio? I haven't gotten out of that habit of not saying that word or feeling bad that I'm saying it. But I also don't know if your kids are hanging around with you tonight. Um, so I'm trying to guard my language because I know a lot of my friends' kids and my nieces and nephews might be crowded around the phones. Um, I get some really cool messages of people taking pictures and I would love it if you guys would do this. If you guys are partying with me right now or any night that we're having cocktails in the war room, take a picture of you and your family or whoever is quarantined with you in the house with me while I'm talking to you so that I can be in the picture and then tweet them to me at Mistress Carrie or tag me on Instagram at Mistress Carrie WAF um, so that we have group photos even though I'm technically not even quarantined with you but... Um, Devin said Carol definitely killed her husband. I, I don't know. The show is so weird. It doesn't make any sense. And the fact that we're so concerned about if Carol killed her husband or what else is going on and nobody is still talking about the tigers and the panthers and the lions and like that's the supposed to be the show, right? Is like the friggin' animals that we should be worried about in the first place. Anyway, so take the pictures with me with you guys in it like... You guys are gonna screen grab those and Photoshop phallic shaped things going into my mouth. I know it, you pervs. Um, what have you guys been um, watching? Not so much on Netflix, but I've been sucked down a couple YouTube rabbit holes just because people have sent me links that went to another link, that went to another link, that went to another link. And then all of a sudden, like, I spent an hour and a half of the 10 hours of screen time yesterday watching the craziest freaking viral videos and have you personally sought out like happy like puppy and kitten videos because I have like I've been watching so many animal videos I can't believe it just because I'm looking for like nice things to make me smile and then when I watch like puppy or kitten videos and they bark or whatever then Wednesday wakes up out of her 12th nap of the day and starts barking at the front door even though there's no dog out there and the UPS guy's not there, but she barks anyway. So what have you guys been watching? And if you come up with some really good stuff, put the links in the comments because uh, like I do every night, um, I go through and, you know, check out your links and your comments. Can I just say this one other thing too? Any show that's still currently on like regular television or is coming out on a series on Netflix or any of the streaming services, if you are right now not making the earlier seasons free for people to binge so you can get them hooked to watch the new season, you're crazy because people are looking for stuff to watch and everyone's laid off and nobody wants to pay to watch the previous seasons of a show they don't know if they're gonna like yet. And it's in season four and they know they can't jump in in the middle of it, but I'm not giving you freaking $15 to watch the first season of a show that I don't know if it's good or not. So make these episodes free so you can hook us because 
we're all laid off. So, mm. and speaking of that, um, I want to do a cheers. Will you guys join me in a cheers for a Boston radio legend who lost her job today? She was the only woman in Boston radio that was on the air longer than me. And her name is Nancy Quill. And she did middays at Mix 106, uh, at Magic 106.7 since 1982. She has been on the air for 38 years and she was laid off and she did her last show today. And, you know, she was at Magic for the whole time, just like I was at AAF for the whole time. And I know what it felt like for me to get laid off and to do my last show, but to be on the listening end of someone that had been at a station longer than I was at AAF and to listen to her do her last show, it was heartbreaking. And so to Nancy Quill, you are a legend. I'm sure there are great things ahead for you. Come on in the unemployment pool, baby. The water is fine. So to Nancy. The TJ show on AMP also got laid off today. Um, but Nancy, having been on the air at Magic since 1982, it's just mind-blowing to me um, that she was laid off and signed off the air today. It's just crazy. Uh, if today is your birthday, we should probably cheers to you too. Happy birthday. You share your birthday with Doris Day. You share your birthday with Tony Orlando. You share it with Eddie Murphy. So cheers to you if it's your birthday. Mm. Fernandez, you have a gift, my friend. And on a serious note, I would also like to wish my cousin Michael a happy birthday today. And while there's so many people stuck in the house um, and so many people that are surfing online and everyone has a little bit of um, downtime, um, I thought this would be a really good time to kind of bring this up. So I want to mobilize you guys. Everybody's wondering if Carol fucking Baskin killed her husband and it's a cold case. I am going to put you guys on a cold case for me, if you don't mind. Um, my cousin Michael that I grew up with, my Auntie Ange who had the birthday yesterday, my godmother, um, my cousin Michael, her son, is six months younger than me. And we grew up three houses apart from each other. We graduated a year apart. And he uh, graduated from Harvard, class of 95, moved to California, um, had been diagnosed in high school with clinical depression and suffered with it for years. And he went missing in uh, February, on February 4th of 2003. And the radio station for a long time was amazing uh, when the search first happened about getting his picture and everything out there because he disappeared without a trace. There was no evidence of foul play. His bank accounts weren't emptied. There was no signs of violence in any way. There were, it was just kind of like he got beamed off the planet by an alien. Um, and we still don't know what happened to him. And today is his birthday. So the first thing I would like to do is to toast my cousin Michael um, because we grew up together and, you know, he used to be Luke Skywalker and I used to be Princess Leia when we were playing Star Wars in the neighborhood. So, but what I would also like you guys to do is go to the website findmikewallace.com, which will bring you to a website that has his life story, has his pictures. It will also bring you to all of the charity events that the family organizes um, to help fund the Shine Foundation, which is an organization that helps um, uh, kids' mental illness, childhood depression, um, to try and help these kids while they're young so that when they get older, uh, they'll be able to um, better kind of handle the challenges that they have. And um, it's got pictures of Mike up there. And so if you go to findmikewallace.com, um, you can see all of the information and maybe, you know, we can spread this around a little bit more. And the family obviously is still holding out hope that without official word that he is no longer with us, then, you know, maybe someday we'll find him. So um, if you don't mind doing that for me, um, like I said, you could go to findmikewallace.com 
I believe it forwards you to a website called michaelsrun.com, which is the 5K that the family started in his honor. Um, my Auntie Ange, my cousin Kim, my cousin Gary, the entire family um, have just been amazing with keeping his name out there, telling his story, working with kids, um, hosting charity events. They just have not let his memory fade. And so I thought, well, we're all kind of hanging out with a little bit of extra time. If you guys um, wouldn't mind giving the website a click and checking it out, and then maybe once we're all allowed out of the house again, maybe you guys would like to go and do Michael's Run, the 5K, and maybe help and get involved. So thank you guys for your help. Check out the website. Thank you for letting me bend your ear about it. Tonight, I have a special gift for you, my friends. I got something so valuable and I can't wait to share it with you and I have been dying all day because I knew tonight I was going to be able to tell you. Are you ready? See this book? Every night I pull a recipe out of this book to help you have some kind of concoction that you make in your bar, but today is different. We don't need the book today. You know why? because Fernandez gave me the recipe to his sangria. And not only did he give me the recipe, he told me I could tell you. <gasps> so thank you very much, Fernandez. Are you ready? Get a pen. Get a pen. Trust me, it's so good. Tony says that sangria is going down like water tonight, huh? Yes, it is. It's Friday. I ain't got no job. I ain't got shit to do. Okay. Here we go. Fernandez's glorious sangria. Now, if you make this sangria, I want a full report because I think it is delicious. Five liters of red sangria wine. Eight ounces of Quattro, uh, Qu Quattro, mm -hmm. Quattro or Kraken rum, depending on how you like it. 12 ounces of either vodka or gin, 12 ounces. Lime, red and green onion, uh, my God, I can't talk tonight. Lime, red or green or both apples, peaches, kiwi, oranges, all cut up into small pieces, mix it up. And then before you serve it, you put a little bit of either seltzer or um, ginger ale in it to give it some bubbles. So five liters of red sangria wine, eight ounces of Cointreau or Kraken rum, 12 ounces of either vodka or gin, and then limes, red or green apples, peaches, kiwi, orange, all cut up into little itty bitty pieces and stir it all up in there and then add the ginger ale or the seltzer before you serve it so that the bubbles are fresh. It's so good and the fruit is so delicious. Let it soak for a while. That's how you know it's good. Uh, a lot of comments on the Aussie shirt. I dug this out for you guys. This is the shirt I got at the No More Tours tour, the first one. I believe I got this at the Orpheum. Um, it doesn't have dates on it on the back or anything. It doesn't even have a year. Um, but I dug it out and thought it was really cool. Um, look at Ozzy he, on my boob. But let me pull that out for you. Um, there's no, like no wrinkles. He almost doesn't look like he looks normal. It's weird. Um, but anyway, so this is one of the shirts that I brought out for you guys. Somebody asked me last night, how many concert shirts do you have? I did not gather up the energy to count them. But it's got to be a few hundred. They're all crammed into this footlocker. Um, I've saved pretty much every concert shirt I've ever bought since back in high school when I started going to concerts. There were some years that I stopped buying them because they the bands weren't making like girls t-shirt shirts yet. Um, but then it just in the last like five or six years, now that there's so many girl shirt options, um, I started buying them again. Um, partly because I wanted to have girls t-shirts and the other part is that I got a lot of tickets like for free over the years um, because of my job at the radio station and I felt like that was my way of supporting the bands um, was to buy a t-shirt and so I have a lot of like newer t-shirts 
that um, I've bought just over the last few years just because I wanted to support the bands. Um, so I've got a lot of new ones and then I've got a ton of old shirts from like the 80s and early to mid 90s. Um, and I've been trying to put on a different one every night. So that's the original No More Tours tour shirt. Then we were gonna get the No More Tours 2 tour shirt. And then Ozzy almost died and then he got better and then he announced the tour. And then the whole world kind of just erupted and AF went off the air and then the coronavirus took over and now I'm waiting for the locust and the meteor at this point because seriously, what the frig else could happen? Um, so Ozzy, as long as you're with us, we're still okay. So to Ozzy, even though it's not his birthday. You know what I started thinking about? Like, what would I be doing right now? Like, if the situation were just normal, right now on, like, a regular day, what the hell would I be doing right now? And it's almost 9 o'clock on a Friday night. Most likely, I would just be getting out of the radio station um, and either going to meet up with friends or coming home after, like, a long day at the studio or whatever. But it almost seems like, am I the only one where I'm starting to get used to, like, being locked in the house? Like, is this what it's like when you're an inmate in prison and at first it sucks and then after a while you kind of get used to it? Because I'm starting to forget what having a real life was like. I mean, it's been, what, a month and a half since AAF went off the air, something like that, which doesn't even seem possible. So it's like, I've started to get used to it in a really weird way. It's like, I almost forgot what, how fun life used to be before it sucked. So what would you be doing tonight? Did you have plans to go someplace tonight? Did, were you gonna go to a party that got canceled? Were you supposed to get married this weekend and that got canceled? Like, Linda says it is the new normal. Yeah, it's weird. Chris is asking, how am I? Uh, I'm okay. I have learned to limit the amount of television that I watch and to limit the exposure of politicians because I have noticed that the more time I watch politicians on television, the less sleep I get and the more angry I get. So I am limiting that. But I have really spent a lot of time trying to um, connect with people. Like I said, yesterday I was, I used the phone for 10 and a half hours. I'm embarrassed to say that, but I've been keeping in touch with a lot of, um, awesome friends, coworkers. I've been FaceTiming with a lot of really cute little kids. Um, I've been taking an ungodly amount of photographs of my dog. It's just ludicrous how many pictures of my dog I have taken in the last few weeks. It's embarrassing. If I, for some reason, trip and fall and hit my head in this house and someone gets a hold of my phone, they are gonna be like, what is wrong with this woman? How many pictures of that pug does she need? And I'm sorry, that's why she has her own Instagram. It's Wednesday the goth pug on Instagram. If you wanna really get bogged down with pug photos, there, there's a lot of them. I haven't even posted all the ones I've taken, um, but there are tons. Uh, my cousin postponed his June wedding due to the coronavirus, says Jeff. Um, has this quarant? Oh, that's a good question. Wendy wants to know: Has this job? Has this quarantine put a pause on your job search? Well, Wendy, let me tell you what. I am searching for jobs as actively as a person can search for jobs in an industry that is basically shut down right now. Um, I've gotten the word out the best I can. I'm online all the time. Um, I've made a ton of calls. Um, I've talked to a few people, but the entire music industry is shut down. I'm not just talking about radio, um, but the touring industry, the record labels are delaying releases of albums. Um, obviously the bands aren't doing anything. And ironically enough, Radio is taking a beating right now. And part of it I understand because obviously there are so many businesses that are shut down and people are laid off that anytime the economy suffers, um, you know, the first line item on a lot of budgets for a business is marketing and advertising that they cut to save money. And so obviously radio being on the receiving end of that stuff um, suffers when it comes to 
you know, taking in advertising money, which is how we would all get paid. What really bums me out right now about what's going on with radio is that I feel like we need it more than ever right now. I'm not naive. I know satellites out there. I know podcasts are out there. I know that Spotify is out there and you know, there's a hundred other places that you can go and get music and stuff. But as you guys very well know, if you guys listen to WAF, um, is that we were and are still obviously, cause we're still hanging out together. Um, we're a family and a community and, I felt like when our back was up against the wall, that's when WAF especially um, was at its best. When the world was chaos and we were there trying to take your mind off of it and trying to um, organize relief efforts and raise money and get word out on, on official notifications on stuff, safety information. I mean, they made us do EAS tests every friggin' week for a reason because we were an outlet to be able to get official word out in the time of an emergency. And so what I don't understand right now is how so many radio stations are doing these massive layoffs where they're either just playing music or they're pre-recording stuff or they're syndicating stuff so that the people in the community aren't even hearing from live and local people because I feel like that's what we all want right now. Like even when I worked at WAF, I used to listen to WAF when I wasn't on it because when I would wake up in the morning, I would wanna know what Hillman was talking about because I knew that if there was something going on in the world, Hillman was gonna be talking about it. I found out about the terrorist attacks at it on the Trade Center when I was driving into the studio from the Hillman Morning Show. And I knew that if I was driving home from the studio in the afternoon that Mike Shu would tell me if something was going on. And so right now it's killing me that radio isn't, isn't at, like doing what it's good at. This is where we shine. This is what we do. We, we get in that studio and if you gotta get in that studio in a friggin' hazmat suit, with Lysol and a face mask by yourself, then you do it. And the fact that radio is having such a hard time right now when I feel like we need it the most is, it's killing me not being on the air right now. Like it is just killing me that I am not in an air studio somewhere talking to you guys every day, keeping the people that are still working occupied while they're working double shifts and all the delivery drivers and the truckers and all these people. It is killing me. And it's also killing me that if you're locked in your house right now, that I'm not the one keeping you company all day or that it's not Mike Shue keeping you company. And I know, you know, Greg Hill obviously has a show on WEI, but I just always felt like, you know, when the shit hit the fan, if you put AAF on, that, that that's when we were at our best. And we unfortunately had to prove it many times over, whether it be 9-11 or the marathon bombing or through, you know, bad weather or, you know, if we lost a musical legend or when anything like that happened, like, I felt like we were all doing it together and a family. And when we needed to make a joke, we needed, we made the joke. And when we needed to cry, we cried together. And when there was important information, we got it out there. And it's just breaking my heart right now to see the entire radio industry struggling right now, because this is when radio shines right now. In my opinion, having been in that studio for 22 years, I think I, I just, it's killing me to hear so many people are getting laid off. And that, you know, it's it that it's the people in the studios that are getting laid off too. It just that's what we do. That's that's what it's there for is to service the local communities. It's it's to be a part of that community. It's to get involved. And you know, so many people have told me since I got laid off, like, don't even worry about getting a radio job. Get into podcasting. Get on satellite. Get into this. Get into that. And maybe I'm just old school, but there's still, in my opinion, a huge place in this world for live and local radio. Passionate local radio, where you are community focused and you're listening to your audience and they're listening to you and you're all in it together. And it, it just breaks my heart 
that that all of this craziness is going on right now and that I'm not on the air, that Mike Shoe's not on the air, that AAF's not there for you. At least right now, I can do this because this doesn't require purchasing equipment and, you know, trust me, everybody's like, what about a podcast? What about this? What about that? It's not that easy to get something like that off the ground in the middle of a global pandemic, okay? I'm working on a lot of different things, but things are very slow. It's hard to get people to wire things in your house. It's it's hard to get equipment. It's hard to do everything right now, and it's incredibly frustrating. So the fact that we are still here together every night at 8.30, I've told you every night that I look forward to this all day. And that's part of it, is that, you know, I... Yeah, I I totally agree. Linda says, radio is so important now more than ever. Yes. Somebody buy me a signal. Mike Shue and I would have no problem walking in there and building you a radio station. God, why don't I win Powerball? Can you imagine if I won Powerball? Oh my God, the radio station we would have. It would be so awesome and so fun. But alas, we live in the real world where I have not won Powerball. AAF is still off the air. And now the government and the CDC are recommending to all of us that we wear a mask when we leave the house from now on. That's where we're at right now. They made the announcement today. In case you missed it, they are suggesting that you now wear a mask when you leave the house to protect yourself. They're obviously saying that the important masks, like N95 masks, um, are needed for the first responders and the healthcare professionals, but that you know the cloth masks, the surgical masks that people are sewing and donating, if you can get something like that, Um, That's what they're saying that um, you should wear when you leave the house. So I don't know how much a bandana is going to help save my life, but if that's what we're supposed to do uh, when we leave the house, if that's what the CDC is saying, and that announcement um, came out today. So that's pretty crazy. Um, If I won Powerball, we would have an amazing station and you would be there. You know what? Thank you, Brandy. I appreciate that because I don't have a job right now and I would really like one. So if anybody for some reason is watching this that runs a radio station, hi, my name's Carrie. I used to be on the radio. I'd like to be on the radio again. If we could figure out how to do that, that would be great. Tom says if he won, he would buy me a station. You're just saying that to make me smile. Um... Uh, I am afraid we will have World War III over this or civil unrest, says Terrence. It's it's getting a little squirrely out there. But I got to tell you, I thought by now it would be a little crazier. And I think one of the reasons why things are still pretty calm outside is because of the truckers and the fact that they are able to get things around this country and the people that work in the stores are able to get things we need up on the shelves and that we're still able to get out there and get what we need and come home. Um, And uh, I think if somehow that got disrupted, I think we'd be having a very different conversation. But I've seen a lot of memes and a lot of people on Twitter and you know, it just goes to show that when things get really hard, the backbone of this country has always been and will always be the truckers. And I'm not saying that because I used to be one, but if you listen to my show over the years, I always used to make the truckers give me a trucker alert because they know I loved them. I did the job, I know how hard it is. But um, the fact that we are still able to go to the store and buy the things we need for our family, whether it be prescriptions, medical supplies, food, you know, anything important that you might need, you're still able to get out there and get it which is not the case in some other places around the world. And it's because of the truckers and you guys are amazing and the post office and the FedEx and the UPS guys and all of you guys that are making it so that, you know, that's what's keeping the civil unrest from happening. That's what's keeping 
the National Guard from having to patrol the streets. I mean, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling pretty safe if I have to leave the house and go get stuff still. So um, we got to give credit where credit is due to everybody that's keeping the rest of us kind of at bay while our healthcare workers are fighting this battle on the front lines. Um, you know, everybody kind of working together. We talk about it every night. I mean, you just see the stories of, um, you know, how everybody's pitching in and how everybody is getting involved and pulling their weight and doing what they can. And it's amazing. Mm. I did see a video online today, though, of a nurse that quit her job because she was asked to take care of COVID patients and they didn't supply her any safety equipment. And she was crying and she literally quit her job as a nurse today because she did not want to put her family in danger by treating patients that were confirmed to have COVID-19 and to not be supplied any protective equipment at all. And so can we just friggin' take care of these healthcare workers? They're what's holding back the dam right now. Like they're, they're holding the water from flooding the town right now. So whatever we got to do to help them, we got to hold that line. And, and if they're going to be up against the dam holding it back, then we got to get behind them to support them because, um, I mean, some of these videos are heartbreaking and obviously, you know, they can't get a lot of video inside the hospitals because of, you know, the privacy laws and all of that. But I can't imagine what is going on inside those hospitals right now. So, um, you know, to all of the nurses, if you are a healthcare worker and this is your night off and you are at home with your feet up for a well-deserved rest, we are so grateful for you and your family who is serving along with you right now and we love you guys and um you know we will never be able to say thank you enough have you seen all of those cartoons that either have superman taking the s off his chest and giving the cape to the nurses or you know to the the cartoons of the soldiers handing the flag to the nurses and i mean people are really getting it they really really are um and I think more than ever, everybody is kind of realizing how important some of these people, like the people that stock the shelves at the supermarket and the people that are, you know, keeping the pharmacies open and that are filling the prescriptions for your kids' medication and, you know, the people that you might not even look at for more than five seconds throughout your busy day when you're hustling and bustling around. It is kind of nice to take that extra minute to look at these people and appreciate how everyone doing their little job kind of keeps everything together. And, um, you know, if that's a lesson that we take out of this when, you know, things finally start getting back to normal, then we're all the better for it. So um, Eric says, shout out to my online buddy, Katie in Wisconsin, who is an ER nurse. To Katie, she's awesome. See all that fruit in there? I'm going to eat every piece of that fruit because that's where the good stuff is. If you missed the recipe for uh, for Fernandez's sangria, I saw somebody typed it out in the comments or you can rewind the video because I gave it to you a couple times. It's Friday. Keep your chin up. If it were a hard week for you because you were at work um, and you worked a lot of hours this week, thank you for all of your hard work this week. And if you have been locked in the house all week, trying to become a school teacher for the first time, or just trying to stay the hell out of the way, um, if you are someone that is newly unemployed and filing for unemployment for the first time and scared, um, unfortunately, I know exactly how you feel. And all I can tell you is that we're going to figure it out somehow. I have to just stay positive in that way and that we are just going to get through it and we're going to figure it out and we're going to do it together. Um, and so you just, you, you just, you got to stay positive, even if it's for a couple of minutes a day where you just force yourself to not be negative and say, okay, you know what? The other 23 hours of today, I can be depressed, but for this one hour, I'm going to go outside and walk my dog. I'm going to call a friend I haven't talked to in a while. And for this one hour today, I'm just not going to be sad. You got to do that. And if you feel like you need help, I know I gave you all of these phone numbers and websites, but I'm gonna give them to you again because I wanna make sure um, that you have resources if you feel like you need them. 
So bear with me for one second because I want to find the page. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 1-800-273-8255. Um, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, 1-800-273-8255. Or you can log on to suicidepreventionlifeline.org. And I'm not just giving you that information for you, but have it at the ready in case you get a random phone call from someone you haven't talked to in a while that sounds like they could use that information as well. Pass it along because... Um, you could end up making the difference in somebody's life right now just by checking in on somebody, telling them that you love them, uh, asking how they're doing, and telling them that you're there for them if they need you. So I know it's tough, guys, but you know what? Make sure, just like Mr. Rogers says, you got to look for the helpers. you got to focus on the people that are doing the right thing. Focus on the people that are doing good and follow them into the fire, and we'll all be okay. So thank you guys for joining me every night in the war room at 830. I love you guys. I give you the same advice all the time. Don't lick anything strange. Wash your damn hands. Remember that you're loved. We are all a family. Every single person you see commenting on this video right now is your family. Whether you've ever met them or not, whether you know them or not, they don't even have to live in the state you just know that we've got all something in common and that we're all family and you got to just know that and we're going to be good. So I love you guys. Stay positive. Stay healthy. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Ask for help if you need it. I'll see you tomorrow.